the role you play is an incredibly nuanced character and he's quite difficult to read but must have been a really brilliant one for you to, to get your teeth into. Yeah, it was great and in a way it's dependent on everything. You don't really, he, he doesn't proactively tell you a lot about himself really. Um, uh, so, so he's dependent on how an amazing people take it out of him. And uh, we had a fantastic cast on this. It's just uh, everything you know that we could have hoped for in terms of performance people brought to it. So it meant that the responses that that he that he has are kind of are you know are nuanced because because the challenge that comes at him is complicated. I mean, because I, was gonna, I mean his his acceptance of his possible fate is. It's kind of heartbreaking, but almost quite inspiring at the same time, isn't it? Well, you see, John keeps going on about this thing, um, about being a glorified suicide and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I think I brought my, the, the last image I thought about, you know, to, to kind of illustrate it was the guy standing in front of the tank, you know, in Tiananmen Square. Is that suicide? For me, for John, he, he reckons that's, a, you know, and for me, that's just trying to stop a tank. <laughs> Uh, so whether it's the same as the guard, whether the guard going down the, the pier in the previous one we worked on together, whether he's deliberately hoping he's going to get shot or whether he's just gone down there to stop these guys and he doesn't care if he gets shot or not in the process, I always think the latter. Yeah. Uh, similarly with Father James. And of course you worked with uh, John on the guard as you just mentioned. Uh, when he approached uh, you for Calvary, did, was there any apprehension? Did you instantly just want to get involved yeah. straight away? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I made a promise to myself when we had this interview I'm going to keep my answers short but actually there's no need to say anything else. <laughs> I did, yeah. And because I, I was wondering, because I just, I just spoke to John and he said that he hadn't come up with the ending until he'd been about two thirds into proceedings and I was one, wondering when you first received the script, did it have the ending already or was it quite early on as well? Uh, yeah, I think that was the first draft. I think, I, uh, um, yeah, I think the ending was, was there. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, it was, I think, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it comes again to, 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 uh, to our different perspectives on it, you know. Like, to me, I mean, you don't want to be talking about the ending. It's a difficult one to, to put out there if you, yeah. don't want to, you know, if you don't want to have spoiler alerts. But to me, he tries to maintain, you know, that it's never too late to, to retrieve the goodness or the salvation of a person's soul, you know, and that, and that it's never too late. And in order to confront that, you know, you know it's a delicate issue. Do do you avoid, do you avoid moments of, you know, that are that are obviously going to be dangerous, or do you do you do you insist that you must you must carry on, uh, so and and meet the challenge. Like it's it's one of there like there are a lot of questions at the end of this film, and I much prefer them to be questions rather than answers. So but I don't have no idea why I'm trying to put an answer to this. <laughs> and because I mean the the opening line is is one that sort of grabs you in quite in sort of a second, of course. Uh, when you first read the script as well, what, what did you make of, of that? Were you kind of t blown away or taken away by the taken back? Sorry, of, by the I was worried about. I was worried about the. I was worried about the response. I was blown away by the opening, but um, I think I, he may have flagged that one to me prior to my reading it. But it was the response I was worried about, um, because he, I mean it's in the trailer, so I'm spoiling nothing. He just said that's a certainly a startling opening line. <laughs> And it's this kind of postmodernist self-referencing. I'm always very, very, very sort of dodgy about it because I'm afraid it'll take people out of the movie. Mm. Uh, but it is a pretty great response at the same time. So that was, that was what occupied me, oddly enough. Because uh, there is a kind of, there is very, the film is very self-referential. The kind of whole, a few lines throughout that kind of make, kind of, yeah, point towards it being a film. Is that something that you enjoy doing as an actor? Then or I'm very been... wary of it. It's like when you're on, it's like when you're doing something on set and the crew f start laughing. When you do that the first few times as an actor, you, f oh, you say, "Brilliant, it's working." But it it always is danger filled. If you're having a good time on set, you say, oh, "Hang on, this is not for the set. This is for the audience." I'm always afraid about that stuff. So I don't know what the, I'm 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 nervous about it. I always hope it'll work, and sometimes you can have a titter of. Right, I'm afraid, I'm always wary of bringing people out of the movie though. And, and though uh, the film is, is quite dark, of course there's some great comic actors on board, Chris O'Dowd, Dylan yeah. Moran for example. Uh, was it quite a nice light relief to, sort of, to no. hang around those guys? Up? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, because they were saying pretty nasty things. And like, you know, it's like being a, you know, at one stage I was like being a really bad heckler at it. At, <laughs> it was like I was getting murdered with all this stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and comics of their nature have, have, a, have a sharpness of observation. You know, 
Um, and th th there's nobody can press your buttons like a neurotic. <laughs> I'm not saying that money method, but it's like you know the way comics uh, traditionally have been, you know, uh, can, can have dark sides as well, and because they are keen observers of human nature, and human nature will always kind of find a way to disappoint, and also find a way to inspire, hopefully. So I'm the guy who's trying to maintain the inspiration, and they're the guys who are trying to poke and say, well, how how could you believe in that stuff? Look at the state of yourself. And I was wondering, so because the character, he, <clears throat> I mean, he's kind of very calming he's got quite a calming presence he's quite affable very easy to like but there is a kind of quite dark brutal side to him i was wondering how you coped in kind of managing the two sides to his demeanor yeah i think he knows his own demons like it's not that he he's a he he has suffered by his own demons already so i think that was the genius of it you know like john john doesn't judge people but i think he understands that, that for somebody to preach and uh, what he has to preach uh, unless he has had his own challenges, it's very difficult for anybody else to listen to him. You know, I remember hearing priests at weddings advising about the difficulties of marriage and thinking, what the hell does he know about marriage? What the hell does he know about marriage other than outside observation of some other marriages? Like, and it's like everything in life, you know, you have to kind of, you feel that you need to, that if somebody speaks of experience and says, I was a junkie, and let me tell you about this and that, you're going to prick up your ears a little bit more than if somebody says it's very bad to do drugs, who never went near anything. So it's just, that's, it's, he has had a very complicated life. He hasn't been a saint. And, uh, you know, his daughter has kind of felt the brunt of that a little bit. So he's a real man, but he is attempting to be. At one stage, he's accused of being judgmental. <laughs> you're a very judgmental man, father. And he says, yes, I am. He said, but I try not to be. And that's all we can do. So just finally, uh, John was mentioning before that he's going to be releasing a, a third film soon. <laughs> and uh, is that are you hoping to complete a trilogy with him? Yeah, I think he's gone off to do something else first. Uh, but he's talking about a very angry paraplegic <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that we might do and complete what he keeps calling the Glorious Suicide um, Trilogy, <laughs> which I fundamentally disagree with. But there you go. Um, yeah, I don't think what we do is is that at all. But yeah, no, I'd love to work with him again. I'm, I'm just hoping and uh, I'm hoping that we get the time and that it all works out. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's much Cheers. appreciated. Thanks. Thank you.